What if we took Pixar characters and had them fight in a Smash Brothers style game? I'll be sharing a roster of characters I'd love to see with their stats and some of their moves. Plus, I'll sprinkle in some extras like theme stages and skins for each fighter. Before we start, I'll be selecting characters from Pixar movies only. I know a 10 character roster doesn't really do this franchise justice, so think of this as the first wave. And if your favorite character isn't included, let me know in the comments and they might join the next one. Toy Story Space Ranger is agile and strong. I can see him playing like a short Captain Falcon using mostly close combat techniques with some abilities from his spacesuit. Buzz Lightyear's recovery is his defining feature as I'll explain in a bit. For Buzz's moves, we have him extending his right arm to karate chop enemies. I could see this being charged up for a smash or repeatedly pressed for some quick chops. Next, we have Space Ranger Spin, named after my favorite Disney park ride, will have Buzz spin in place while he shoots his laser. This won't do a lot of damage, but is good at fending off opponents. Buzz's last signature move is Infinity and Beyond, where he soars to the nearest platform edge when activated. This ability has a 3 second cooldown though, so it's important to use it wisely. Besides his usual Space Ranger outfit, let's dress Buzz as Mrs. Nesbitt, Zero Suit Buzz, is decked out in Chrome Intergalactic Buzz, and as a special bonus, I present... Oye, pendejo, te dije que traeras toda la mota. Wait, that's not family friendly. I meant Buzz in Espanol. Venga conmigo, señorita. Le enseñaré las maravillas de la galaxia, y juntos, con nuestro amor, venceremos al mal. Anyone can cook, but only the fearless can be great. Linguini and Remy! Linguini is a lanky chef who is light on his feet, so a clumsy version of Sheik comes to mind in terms of movement and combat. But unlike Sheik, Linguini can take a beating. He performs best when Remy takes control of him, so it makes sense to have this ability in game. Linguini and Remy pair up in a special ability I call Little Chef, which gives Linguini a considerable power boost. However, at 70%, Linguini loses his toque blanche and his tiny chef, but Remy returns in the next life and will scurry down to assist with some moves such as Remy's Bite. Linguini grabs the enemy in an inescapable hold as Remy sinks his teeth into them. Deliver a Garbage Boy Strike where Linguini lunges forward with random custodial objects all dealing the same damage. Throwing 4-star scraps allows Linguini to recycle unwanted food items by hurling them as projectiles. For a final smash, let's complete us where the stage transforms into the La Ratatouille Bistro as the duo cooks their most famous dish. Players have to avoid getting hit by these taste visuals. By the way, remember how I said that there's 10 characters in this roster? Well, I lied. There's another iconic bonus character from one of these films that I've included. You'll just have to wait and see. You know, because thunder always comes after lightning. Lightning McQueen! Before you question my inclusion of a car in this roster, check out this DBZ mod. In quick confession, I haven't seen the movie, so I hope I can do you Cars fans justice. Because of his speed, I feel that Sonic is a good template for Lightning McQueen. And for you Rocket League fans, I'd imagine his movement would be similar. He doesn't have any ranged moves though, so expect to commit to your attacks. A few of them include Turbo Slam, where Lightning McQueen boosts high, then zooms down and crushes his opponents. His tongue tackle has the car pushing out his tongue just like his photo finish in the movie as a dash attack. In similar style to Inkling, Lightning McQueen can let out a Kachow Slick, which causes enemies to slip and fall when making contact. He also has a boost meter that you'd have to charge up, similar to Cloud's limit meter. But once it's charged, Lightning McQueen gets a 10 second buff in speed and jump height. Let's get Guido into the fight as an assist trophy will put his pit stop skills to good use as he patches up fighters. Guido, it's time. <laughs> Lead the saving of the world to the men? I don't think so. I don't think so. Elastigirl! The super mom is my favorite fighter. She can stretch any part of her body, making her an extremely versatile fighter. I can see her playing like Min Min because of her range, but cooler since she can make any body part longer, not just her arms. Helen would be slippery as well since she's able to form all these different shapes. Let's dive into that. Her Elast Evade is a defense move that has her stretch her body to avoid incoming attacks. This move, when properly timed, can lead to some big punishments. Next, we have the Protective Parachute, which gives Helen the ability to form a parachute with her body. I can see this move being used as a mix-up when recovering. Elastigirl even has her own projectiles that she'll launch using her elastic slingshot. Costumes for Elastigirl include the original suit, Housewife Helen, the Incredibles 2 suit, and the classic suit. I also really buffed up her weight stat. 
And I think we all know why. Hold up. Damn, boy! These next couple of picks are a bit more complex than usual, but if you master them, ooh, you'd probably be unstoppable. Oh, about the hustle, am I right? Mailin Lee! The passion of overachieving weirdo. Doesn't put up much of a fight in her human form. But thanks to her ancestors, she'll transform into a giant red panda once her emotions bar reaches full capacity. This bar fills up each time she gets hit and will cool down if she avoids damage for a while. Red panda form gives Mei Mei a huge stat buff, but she'll revert after one minute or if she loses a stock. The red panda I could see sharing traits from both Incineroar and Bowser with a decent speed, but her weight and power will make her a challenging opponent. I can see Mei and red panda being brawlers, so here's some moves which show that. Starting as a human, we have fangirl rush where Maylin bursts forward with a flurry of punches as if she was trying to make her way to the front of a crowd at a four town concert incorporating her love for academia will have Maylin thrust her trusty writing utensil upward in a move called pencil push and yes pencils are dangerous for her panda form, Mei Mei uses Paw Punch to pummel enemies into the ground. She can follow that up with a panda hug, while cute and cuddly in the movie will be more so conniving and crushing in game. For her final smash, Red Panda Rage, Mei Lin grows to her mom's size to terrorize the battlefield, just like Ming did to the Sky Dome. <laughs> the music, it's, it's not just in me, it is me. Ernesto de la Cruz! Since the main character of Coco, Miguel, wants to be a musician like him, I think Ernesto should fight with songs, not fists. Ike comes to mind in terms of playstyle because of his slower but stronger attacks. He's definitely not a beginner-friendly character, but completing his moves will make flashy plays. Starting with his deadly melody, Ernesto sings a powerful tune that deals damage to any player with an earshot and can be directed based on user input. For close encounters, use Shocking Strum, which temporarily stuns opponents, leaving you more time to perform attacks. And to round up the list, we have Ballad of Betrayal, where Ernesto stands in place playing a haunting piece which inflicts bursts of damage to players for the next 10 seconds. If this design isn't unique enough for you, I'll add an extra layer with his rhythm-based final smash. Ernesto dazzles with his most popular song, enveloping opponents in glitz and glamour that slows them down. During this, he attacks them in hi-fi rush fashion, with visual and audio cues helping players time their attacks for maximum damage. As a showman, Ernesto has a special ability, Star Power, which slightly increases his music's range every time he taunts. This effect wears off when he... Now, let's delve into this next round of non-human picks, making this roster even more diverse. Wally! Look, there's a Smash Fighter that's a bot, so why not include one in this roster? With all the gadgets Wally has, it just makes sense to weave them into his moveset. Despite being small and carrying around all that gear, Wally still manages to whip around, so I tried to reflect that in his stats, not being too overpowered, but also not sluggish. For his moves, we have the Compactor, a grab attack where players are packed into a cube and inserted into Wally for some serious damage. Like the good robot he is, we'll have Wally use Plant Pot, where he plants a seed that will grow into a tree, which hurts others who come into contact. And when Wally is at high percentage, he'll bust out his solar panels, which will help lowering his damage taken. There's a bit of startup time, but more healing is applied the longer he charges. To prove that he's not totally useless, we'll have the Axiom's captain as an assist trophy in game. He'll whiz around in his chair, which would be equipped for combat. Go for it. Send to the repair ward. Wait, did he just say we couldn't have dessert? Anger! Being the most obvious choice out of the emotions to fight, Anger has a moveset that relates to fire. While I don't think he's a good pick for movement, his ability to eat hits and power makes up for it. Also, his attacks cover a very wide range of distances. Starting with Short Fuse, after an initial startup, Anger explodes in flames, causing damage to anyone caught in them. This also hurts him a little. Watch out for his raging headbutt, where fire erupts from his head as he launches it into fighters. This can also be charged up for more power. And for opponents who don't want to upset him even more, Anger can throw a flame ball at them. Because of his easily frustrated nature, Anger has the special ability to break out of combos that are more than five hits. He throws a counter jab aimed in the direction of the last strike. Maybe this will help players who like to rage quit. <laughs> Saving the best for last, I've kept an underrated gem and a fan favorite from y'all. Also, the mystery fighter will soon be revealed. I'll be shooting for my own time. Merida! 
Just like Mulan in the Disney roster, Merida makes an easy pick for a Pixar fighting game. She has all the tools available to be a lethal force. I can see her fighting like Link, although she's most known for her archery skills, so that'll be her main weapon. But she could pull out a sword and spear for closer confrontations. Merida launches a burst of raining arrows that land adjacently to each other, making it hard to miss enemies. Since bears were central to the story, let's have Merida do a bear slash where she swiftly swings her sword and knocks opponents upward. Merida can also summon the Wisps. For those who don't know, they brought her toward significant places along her journey. In game, they'll guide enemies closer to her, making them easier to attack. With 22 costumes in the film, there's a lot of ways to style Merida. So besides her default, let's go with Princess Merida, Cram Princess Merida, and Cape Merida. As an assist trophy, her mom, Queen Eleanor, makes an appearance in her cursed bear form. She wreaks havoc amongst enemies who cross her path. Yay, mother-daughter relationships? That's a C, dear. Pay attention, everyone. You're about to see the best Sir, in the business. Sully! Go, go, go. I'm a huge Sully fan, so yes, he's a no-brainer for this roster. This big, lovable mop has the power and weight to match, but this also means that he makes a big target like DK in Bowser. For his moveset, Sully unleashes a frightful roar, which makes players in its direction duck down in fear. This opens a window for Sully to follow up with pounds and kicks. His Randall Toss is inspired by Sully's heroics at the end of the first movie. After grabbing opponents, he'll horizontally launch them. <laughs> Covering his backside, Sully uses his tail whip to thrust fighters upward. Use this move to start deadly combos. Customization options include default and formal wear in Monsters Inc. to his younger days in Monsters University with his Uzma Kappa shirt and Letterman jacket. And because this scene from Monsters Inc. lives in my head rent free, we're gonna include him making this overwhelmed face, then fainting as a damaging downtown, just like Luigi and Greninja's. Let's uncover the secret to filling a Twinkie. It's these metal tubes which inject the cream into each sponge cake. With a small roster, would it make sense to have multiple characters from the same movie appear in it? Probably not, but I have to make an exception. Reach for the sky! Woody! Let's be honest, Woody and Buzz were essential to Pixar's early success, so it only makes sense for the first wave of rosters to include both of them. This cowboy never uses a revolver in the movies, but in-game he'll use it as a primary weapon. And even though his recovery won't be as good as his rivals, Woody's pull string is super useful for this. It's also useful for his lasso grab where Woody throws his string forward and drags it towards him, grabbing anyone who gets caught in it. He pulls out a boot for his special snake boot attack, where a snake slithers towards enemies and bites them. The snake can be killed though, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Based on his nickname, the Sheriff Star move has Woody throwing his badge like a boomerang. Performing this attack while emptying his revolver would be annoying to deflect. Woody calls on his pals for his final smash, Toy Blitz. The stage transforms into Lego bricks as giant toys rain down, bouncing and rolling across it. Players will have to dodge or deflect the toys to avoid taking damage from them. Buzz look at alien! <laughs> and that's a wrap for the first wave of Pixar Smash Fighters. Who would you main? I'm gonna do more videos like this, so let me know in the comments who would you like to see in a future roster, or maybe another franchise I should tackle. But until then, check out this video YouTube thinks you'll like.